so i'll sing shuddha bhakata charana renu bhajana anukul so it's a long song it has eight stanzas so i'll sing the first three stanzas how many of you know the song already i'm sure all of you know it uh, so if i sing how many of you will be repeat it with me <laughs> okay and so the first three stanzas go like you know the meaning of the song maybe beginning at the beginning i'll just discuss it briefly shuddha bhagato charano renu bhajano anukul shuddha bhakta means a pure devotee obviously this song is indicating shila propan for us shuddha bhakata a pure devotee like shila propan the dust from the lotus feet of such a devotee charano renu charano means feet and renu means dust mm. so dust from the lotus feet of a pure devotee is very conducive anukul mm. very conducive to spiritual progress bhajana anukul bhakato seva paramo siddhi premo lotikaro mul service to such a pure devotee is the cause of spiritual perfection paramo siddhi the cause of ultimate perfection bhakato seva paramo siddhi and premo lotikaro mul the service to a pure devotee is the root of the devotional creeper often devotional service has been compared to a creeper like bhakti lata premo lata premo loti karu mul the root of the creeper of devotional service that gives to krishna prem madhav tithi bhakti janani jatone palano kori madhav tithi the days that are very dear to krishna madhav those days that are very dear to krishna like ekadashi janmashtami gaur purnima proper observance of those days is actually the mother of devotion bhakti janani therefore i observe them very very carefully very attentively very devotedly madhavas tithi bhakti janani jatone palano kori and krishna basuti basuti boli paramo adore bori the places that are residence of krishna krishna basuti i make them the places of re- i make my residence in the places where that are krishna's place of residence like bash krishna basuti krishna's place of residence are vrindavan mayapur dwarka also krishna's place of residence are the temples hmm. now we are seeing uh, because of the temples so many devotees are actually settling down around here hmm. because being in such an atmosphere helps us in our spiritual progress krishna basuti basuti boli paramo adore bori i accept those places as my place of residence 
very, very lovingly. Gauro Amar Jeshavasthane Korilo Brahmano Rangi. The places where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu play, performed his pastimes, the places, the holy places where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited. Gauru Amar Jeshavasthane Korilo Brahmano Rangi. Brahmano means travel. The places that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu traveled to, the holy places. Sheshavasthano Heri Boyami. Pranayi Bhakoto Shangi. I will go to see those places in the association of devotees. Gauru Amar Jeshavasthane Korilo Brahmano Rangi Sheshavasthano Heribo Ami Pranayi Bhakoto Shangi. Pranayi means the devotees who have developed genuine love for Krishna. The places or holy places of pilgrimage should be visited with the in the association of devotees. And that's where Prabhupada started the culture of Brajamandal Parikrama, Mayapur Parikrama, the Parikrama, the pilgrimage in Mayapur, pilgrimage of Vrindavan in the association of advanced devotees who have developed their love for Krishna. So I'll just sing these three stanzas. Shuddha bhakato 
चरण रेन भजन अनुकु माधवती भक्ति जननी जतने पालन माधवती भक्ति जननी जतने पालन कृष्ण बसती बसती बोली परम आदरे ब कृष्ण बसती बसती बोली परम आदरे ब शुद्ध भकत चरण रेणु भजन अनुकु गौरयामार जे सब स्थान भ्रमण रंगे गौरयामार जे सब स्थान कर भ्रमण रंगे से सब स्थान हेरिबयामी प्रणय भकत संगे से सब स्थान हेरिबयामी प्रणय भकत संगे शुद्ध भकत चरण रेणु भजन अनुकु शुद्ध भकत चरण रेणु भजन हारे कृष्ण हारे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 
राम राम हरे हरे Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nittai Gaur Hari Bol Hari Bol Hari Bol Hari Bol Jaya Jaya Prabhupada Prabhupada Prabhu Pāt, Prabhu Gaur Premanande Hari So, thank you all very much for this session of session on the priceless gift. Yesterday we briefly discussed a sort of the introduction to this topic and obviously the gift is what we already have received the gift of Krishna consciousness that was given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the Supreme Personality of Godhead and it has been distributed all over the world by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. And as a result of that, today, in the remote corner of this world, called Houston, we are having access to this wonderful gift. This gift has been distributed literally all over the world due to Srila Prabhupada's divine arrangement. Five hundred years ago, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu predicted that this gift is going to be distributed all over the world in every town and village. Prithivite achi jato nagoradi gram sarvatra prachar hoi vemornam to all the towns and cities and villages this Krishna consciousness movement will spread distributing this gift. Yesterday we also discussed briefly about sometimes due to our immaturity we fail to recognize the actual value of a gift. 
like a very wealthy person kind of give his inheritance or a huge amount of his wealth to his little child as a gift but the child because he's a child he doesn't understand what it's what it actually means uh, a legal document saying that he is the successor of his wealth and he hands it over to his child but to a child it's just a piece of paper uh, because he's a child he cannot recognize he doesn't recognize what's the value of the gift rather he feels that oh what's what am i going to do with this piece of paper <laughs> it have been better if i had a little toy instead of this But similarly we also tend to think that way uh, that probably it have been better to have some other thing that we can relate to that we have some need or utility that would have been better to better than having this uh, hari krishna maha mantra sometimes we consider that it's a burden oh i have to chant 16 rounds why did i make a why did i take a vow at the time of initiation that i have to chant 16 rounds now i'm stuck when i don't chant 16 rounds i feel guilty and on top of that there is this four regulative principles <laughs> no meat eating no intoxication no illicit sex no gambling but we actually don't recognize the effect that we will get as a result of this chanting hare krishna maha mantra the need for following the four regulative principles often we tend to forget often we fail to recognize the need therefore proper pointed out that it needs intelligence to understand what is the outcome what is the benefit of chanting hari krishna maha mantra what is the benefit of following the four regulative principles what is the benefit of practicing this process of krishna consciousness diligently so that's why there is a need to remind ourselves therefore it's a need for senior devotees to give classes on a daily basis propad made the arrangement that the devotees give classes on shrimad bhagavatam classes on bhagavad gita the need for the importance of reading his books because <clears throat> first of all the human form of life comes with a very very special opportunity that opportunity is not available not only to the subhuman species this opportunity actually is not available to even uh, the superhuman individuals like the demigods their situation is beyond the human beings but they also can't have a, access to this process of krishna consciousness in order to ad- have the advantage in order to have this opportunity the demigods have to come down to the earth planet even the demigods can't have access or have take advantage of this benefit but as human beings we have this opportunity why because in the human form of life we have the opportunity to get rid of our past karma karma is actually the cause of our bondage 
as long as we have the karmic reactions, as long as we are liable to our karmic reactions, we have to stay in the earth planet. We have to stay in the material nature. <clears throat> Good karmas or bad karmas, both karmas actually tie us down to the material nature. Although good karma gives favorable results and bad karma gives us unfavorable results, but both are the cause of bondage. Now, the subhuman species like animals, birds, reptiles, insects, they don't have the opportunity to get rid of the karma because they are under the control of the material nature. They don't have the the prerogative to decide for themselves how to get rid of karma. The, the mother nature actually guides them. They are completely under control of mother nature. And the demigods are stuck with their good karma. In the heavenly planet, as long as they are in the heavenly planets, they have to enjoy the benefits of the karma, they are stuck. Only in the earth planet, the human beings have this facility, have this advantage. The hum that's the human form of, the, that's the wonderful advantage of the human form of life. Human beings can get rid of their karma. And the way to do that, pure devotional service. As Krishna says, Sarvadharman Parittajya, Mamekam Sharanam. You just surrender unto me and I will deliver you from all your karmic reactions. Although he is saying papibhya, it actually means the entire karma. Pap is something that, that we do not want the results of those karma. People generally tend to have uh, attachment to their good karma to enjoy. Uh, Therefore, they are attached to the results of good karma, but Krishna is, therefore, Krishna is saying papibhya. But ultimately, it's both papibhya and punyabhya. Uh, Krishna will deliver us. That means mm, we will be free from our material bondage. Go back to Him. When, it does, when there is no karma, there is no cause to remain in this material nature. The material nature is Krishna's arrangement to tie the living entities down with a system, with an arrangement called guna and karma. Material nature is, has three, mother nature uh, has three, uh, she is possessed of, she is endowed with three karma, uh, three gunas, goodness, passion and ignorance. And the living entities act in those modes of nature. And accordingly, they get the results. The result of uh, acting in mode of goodness is elevation. Uddhang achanti shaktastha. Those, those who are acting in the mode of goodness, they will be elevated to the higher planetary system. Madhye tishthanti rajasa. Those who are in the mode of passion, they remain in the middle. And jaghanna guna vrittishya adho vachanti tamasaha. Those who are in the, acting in the mode of ignorance, they become degraded to the lower situations. In this way, one acts and the reaction takes place naturally due to the influence of the modes of nature. Doibi maya gunamayi. This maya, Krishna is saying, is gunamayi, is endowed with the modes. And hmm, living entities are functioning in those modes, and as a result of that, they get the reactions of their actions. Everyone is stuck in this arrangement. We are acting, we are getting the reactions. But Krishna's divine arrangement is, you just surrender unto me, then you will become free from all these karmic reactions. 
how is it an example is a prison a prisoner in a prison he is sentenced to imprisonment for his crime for his criminal act a prisoner may have uh, life imprisonment but if the prisoner appeals to the king i'm sorry that i made this mistake i promise i'll never ever commit that same mistake i'll never act in that way i'm surrendering unto you surrendering unto you in whichever way you want huh? i will act and i'll never go against you then the king may hmm, give him amnesty okay fine huh? he has he has understood he has rectified so let him go often time the king doesn't release that prisoner right after he receives that appeal he informs the prison authorities that i have received such and such petition such and such appeal from this prisoner watch him see how he acts take care of him and the prison authorities see that the person has rectified he really uh, surrendered himself to the king his activities are very very submissive he is very obedient he is very mm, diligent mm. so the prison authorities then don't treat him like a prisoner the prison authorities then treat him uh, start to give him facilities and then uh, as he be displays this attitude then they present him as a role model to the other prisoners and the prisoner also tells the other prisoners look you know i surrender to the king and i'm getting all these facilities and this is how the other prisoners also get affected by his hmm, teachings and then they eventually the king signs sends a uh, order to the prison authorities that uh, like he is acting so illustrious acting so in a such an exemplary way send him to my palace so that prisoner from the prison becomes elevated to the palace of the king stays with the king gets the same facility that the king is enjoying so that is what happens when one surrenders to krishna he may not be elevated to the spiritual world straight away but he is not treated like a prisoner anymore because he surrendered to the king he is not treated as a criminal mm-hmm. and the prison authorities start to give him benefits facilities uh, and then uh, the prison authorities present him as a role model and the person also starts to tell other prisoners uh, like one surrenders to krishna then in the prison house the pr- this a uh, person who became a devotee of krishna he goes to others and tells him look i surrendered to krishna and this is the benefit i am getting so why don't you also surrender and see what happens uh, that is how a devotee acts naturally and then eventually when the time comes uh, he will leave this world and go back to be with krishna in the spiritual world so this is the reward that one receives when one surrenders unto krishna just surrender it's simple surrendering is not difficult difficult is to 
to defy. Difficult is to revolt. Difficult is to stand up against him. Like a constant battle is going on. Material life means a constant struggle uh, with death. From the time we are born, we are struggling against death. Death is trying to finish us off and we are struggling, we are struggling, we are struggling. But surrender means no more struggle. Krishna, please you take care of me. I remember for the first time I really experienced what peace means when I, while reading Srila Prabhupada's Nectar of Devotion internally I decided to surrender and then a profound feeling came now from now on I don't have to worry about myself anymore now Krishna will take care of me I'm surrendering myself to him and let him take care of me and that feeling was so profound and I felt that from I felt a relief from anxiety, no more anxiety. Krishna will take care. I am surrendering unto him. And that's what really happens. It's so easy to surrender and the reward is so wonderful. This material nature is full of struggle. The material nature is full of anxiety. On the other hand, the spiritual nature, spiritual world is Vaikuntha. Kuntha means anxiety. And Vaikuntha means no anxiety. From now on there is no anxiety. The, re the word, that world has no anxiety. Free from anxiety. Nobody has any... In that world there is no room for anxiety. Because everyone is surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Controller, the Supreme hmm, Proprietor, and the Supreme Enjoyer. So when he surrender unto such a person, how can there be any anxiety? So uh, that is the thing that happens as soon as one surrenders unto Krishna. As soon as one accepts the process of devotional service. Devotional creeper, as it sprouts into a seedling, Bhakti Lata Bij, the seed of devotional creeper, as it sprouts, Rupa Goswami is describing, the sprout uh, comes with two leaves, right? When the seed, seed becomes a seedling, it has initially it has just two, two leaves. And he's saying that these two leaves of this Bhakti Lata Bij are Kleshagni. Kleshagni means no more distress. No more distress. Freedom from distress. And Shubhada, appearance of all auspiciousness. The moment you surrender, the moment you accept this process of Krishna consciousness, then immediately uh, we develop, we receive these two benefits. Uh, no more suffering. And the life becomes full of auspiciousness. Kleshogni, Shubhada. So that is the very, very initial reward of accepting Krishna consciousness. So, now this is how, this is the real, I mean we can see it, this, what a wonderful gift it is. And what a wonderful result comes out of that. But then again the consideration is, are we attentively following that? We have accepted the process, but how diligently, how sincerely we are practicing the process. We considered this particular topic for this seminar last time when I was here because there is a feeling that many devotees are not following the process of Krishna consciousness seriously in spite of being initiated. 
Unfortunately, many devotees, even after initiation, even in spite of taking the vow at the time of initiation, do not chant their 16 rounds. Do not follow their vow that they have taken. Why is that? Because they forget. Initially, they are so interested, oh, I want initiation, I want initiation, I want initiation. Of course, one reason many individuals want to take initiation because they know that by taking initiation they will become free from their karma. <laughs> the guru will take the karma. <laughs> but the thing is, it's not just one-way traffic, it's a two-way traffic. Guru will take your karma, but there is certain responsibility that you also have. And that is diligently follow the process and the guru actually feels that if my disciples become a pure devotee then I have a chance to go back to God <laughs> of course the guru's uh, guru's confidence is in holding on to the lotus feet of his guru guru is a guru to his disciples but in reality, he is a disciple of his guru. And his business is to hold on to the lotus feet of his spiritual master. That is his, uh, his source of confidence. I have a pure devotee as my spiritual master. And if I remain properly attached to him, if I remain loyal to him, then uh, he will deliver me. That is the process. And the disciples also mm -hmm. have, everybody has the responsibility in this way to diligently, earnestly hold on to his spiritual master through his instructions. This process will work only when we are sincerely practicing the process. Initiation is the beginning, the beginning of the process. Initiation is not the end. And by following this process that comes along with that initiation is the means to go back to the spiritual world. In that respect, Srila Prabhupada gave an example that a boatman has the responsibility to take the passengers across the river. It is a boatman's responsibility. But if some passenger jumps overboard, then the boatman may save him or may not save him. It's up to him. So this wonderful boat that we have, the wonderful that Srila Prabhupada has created, is ISKCON. That is why it's so important that we remain properly situated in ISKCON. It's such a wonderful creation of Srila Prabhupada. And literally, practically, we also see uh, that individuals, many devotees had spiritual, had difficulties. Their spiritual master uh, failed. The spiritual master fell down and left. Many of their disciples followed them. They also left Iskon. When the Guru left Iskon, many of the disciples also left Iskon. But at least we are seeing that those who remained in Iskon, their spiritual life is safe. So this is the wonderful shelter that Srila Prabhupada has created for us. You remain in Iskon. You may not live in a temple but remain connected to ISKCON with all sincerity. Then your spiritual success will be guaranteed. Remain in ISKCON means <clears throat> follow the process that Srila Prabhupada gave. You may not physically live in a temple, but even though you may be a householder, wherever you are, just practice the process of Krishna consciousness. 
if you are initiated don't ever fail to chant 16 rounds every day if some day you fail to chant 16 rounds then cover it up the next day hmm. sometimes it happens due to some pressure or due to some important response engagement we may not be able to chant 16 rounds on a particular day but we should uh, cover that backlog and never deviate from following the four regulative principles and even if we if we fail sometimes uh, then uh, pray to krishna and make it a point not to fail again these are the two simple things that shri prabhupada is expecting from us in iskon chant 16 rounds follow the four regulative principles and prabhupada in a few occasions he assured us that if we follow this process then he will take us back to god head what a wonderful assurance so why shouldn't we take advantage of this like uh, as a matter of fact we cannot actually measure the value of this wealth value of this gift uh, is priceless why it's priceless because no amount of wealth can compare to this gift there's an example uh, in that respect in the purana once there was a consideration what is more valuable all the wealth of this world or devotional service or actually the the consideration was can anything uh, compare to the value of devotional service devotional service is represented by a tulasi leaf devotional service bhakti was represented by just one little leaf so in one hand of the balance one tulasi leaf was skipped and on the other uh, all the wealth kept on uh, putting in all the wealth of this world was put in the other one but tulasi leaf remained <laughs> heavier than all that wealth so that is the value of devotional service nothing of this material nature uh, will match this gift of devotional service there are so many such wonderful examples a simple consideration is all that we have in this material nature will we be able to take them with us after death hmm? there's a beautiful example cited by guru nanak hmm? guru nanak was a great uh, spiritual personality contemporary of chaitanya mahaprabhu actually and <clears throat> he used to visit as a preacher he used to visit uh, sadhu different places and once he was invited by a very very wealthy person and in his palace a beautiful garden and at the outside on the wall next to the wall he saw many flags so he asked what does this what do the flags stand for what are these flags for and he was tell he was told that when this person accumulates a certain amount of gold coins like 1000 gold coins one flag goes up so these flags are actually indicating how many thousands of gold coins he has <laughs> guru nanak didn't say anything i mean you can well imagine how wealthy that person was 
So when Guru Nanak was leaving, he gave that man one needle. Can you please keep it for me? And I'll come and take it from you at some point. So he asked, when will you come to take this needle? He said, in my next life. <laughs> so he said, how am I going to take this needle to give it to you in the next life? So Guru Nanak said, oh, you won't be able to carry this needle. How are you going to carry all these gold coins? <laughs> and that person was intelligent, so he surrendered to Guru Nanak. So, <clears throat> so these are uh, simple examples that are cited by the self-realized souls. And we have to take these examples very, very carefully. How, what we'll be able to carry with us after death. I also had a similar kind of an experience in a way. When I just joined, I actually joined in Mayapur. And one day, in the early days, maybe a few days in the movement, I was chanting and standing in front of the deities. Those are Radha Madhav deities or small deities. And so I was, and I had a feeling that here is the personality who owns everything, who is the supreme creator, he's the supreme maintainer. And whatever I ask from him, I, I'll get it, he'll give it to me. So what should I ask? At the, it was all going on in the back of my mind. And then many thoughts were coming. Uh, and one thought just came that if I ask him, uh, so many crores of rupees he'll give it to me but if I die tomorrow then what will happen uh, that has a that was that has a very profound effect I'm sure everybody actually goes through such experiences mm. we may ask anything from Krishna and Krishna will give but what's the use of that if we die tomorrow? Therefore, better ask something that we'll be able to carry with us after death. And this is, and, and that is this gift. This we'll be able to carry even after death. We may not achieve, we may not achieve spiritual perfection in this life. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This asset will remain with us life after life. In that respect, let's consider <clears throat> what is material and what is spiritual? What's the, what is the difference between material and spiritual? The difference is actually very simple. Where we put ourselves in the center, that is material. When you put Krishna in the center, that is spiritual. So whatever we acquire, uh, with putting ourselves in the center, mean, meaning our body in the center, mm. our false ego in the center, mistaken identity in the center, all that we have to leave behind when we die. But when you put Krishna in the center, that is spiritual. That means that assets remain with us, in, with the spirit soul. And since the spirit soul doesn't die, these assets remain with the spirit soul. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada gives a very wonderful example in that respect, that in this life you may not achieve 
perfection to go back to the spiritual world. But if you make advancement up to certain degree, hmm, then in your next life, if you, when you start, you'll start from that point. Hmm. This is how it remains with us. That's why we see sometimes that some devotees seem to be very, make advancement very quickly. They join and very soon they seem to be very, very advanced. Achieve very quick advancement. Why? Because they're already advanced from the spiritual life. And in this life when they began, they immediately or very soon they achieved that point where they ended, where they left last life. So this is how <clears throat> uh, this wealth actually remains with us life after life. Therefore we don't have to worry about uh, Krishna is also giving that assurance. Salpam appasya dharmasya trayate mahutu bhayat. Even this devotional service is executed very slightly. Still it will free us from great uh, fear of death or losing everything. Mm. The ultimate fear is the fear of losing everything. But in this way, uh, because we have sh taken shelter of Krishna, there is no question of feeling any fear. Krishna will take care of me. That confidence is always there with the devotee. So that is the benefit of surrendering to Krishna. That's, that is the benefit of executing devotional service, no matter how insignificant it may be. Also another example, <laughs> actually Puranas are full of examples like that, uh, just to give us the understanding properly. One man, he was very, very cruel, very nasty, very bad. In his whole life he didn't do anything good. But one day it was raining. Uh, it was raining and one person was getting drenched in that rain just next to his house. So he invited that person, okay, come in, come inside. And that person who he gave shelter to happened to be a Vaishnava. That's the only good thing he had done. Rather unconsciously he just allowed him to stay uh, at the shelter of his house when it was torrential rain outside. So when he died, you know after death what happens with most of the people? That doesn't happen to the devotees. Or in, I'll come to that. Even if it happens to devotees, nothing to worry about. So after death, one, is, one has to go to Jamaraj. Jamaraj is the judge. And Jamaraj judges all that activities that are in favor or against him. So Jamaraj told him that, look, by the way, Jamraj also has a clerk. His name is Chitra Gupta. And he has the database where everyone's <laughs> activities are stored. <laughs> so <clears throat> Jamraj asked Chitra Gupta and Chitra Gupta said that this man's life is full of sinful activities. But there is only one good thing he has ever done. What is that? Once he allowed a Vaishnav to come and stay inside his house when it was raining. So Jamraj asked that person, so see, your whole life is full of sinful activities, but there is one good, uh, good act that you had done. Now, what do you want first to take? What result, what kind of reactions you want to take? You want to take the result of your sinful activities first, or your good deed first. So somehow this person was quite intelligent. So he said that I'll take uh, the result of the good act first. Fine. 
So as a result of that one simple good act, he got a human form of life. And he remembered that incident and he thought that if one such act can give me such benefit, this life, let me dedicate my whole life in serving the Vaishnavas. <laughs> so this is the result of Salpamappa Sadharmasya. A little good deed can, a little bit of involvement in devotional service can save us from the greatest fear. And this is what Srila Prabhupada has given us. And we can see uh, like the way Srila Prabhupada did that we can see what an amazing personality he was. Sometimes I feel that today's world is not actually able to recognize Srila Prabhupada's greatness. Like so many people are becoming glorified, so many people are recognized as the greatest personalities. But the greatest of all personalities, Srila Prabhupada, is going unnoticed in this world. And <clears throat> in that respect I consider, or we all can consider, that have you been close to a very high mountain? How many of you have gone to the, some mountainous area? Okay. So when you are very close to a very tall mountain, do you get to see the mountain? No, a small little hill uh, obscures that mountain. Even a tiny little uh, tree can obscure the vision of the mountain. But as we move away, as we move further away from that mountain, the height of the mountain becomes obvious. So in order to recognize the greatness of a real great personality, we have to move away on time. And as we move away, further we go away, the more we'll be able to recognize the greatness of Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada is actually too close to us. He has just been here. Although his activities are most remarkable, remarkable to an extent that it won't be an exaggeration to say that Srila Prabhupada's achievement is actually the greatest miracle that has happened in this world. The greatest miracle. The most inconceivable thing has been accomplished by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada actually gave, and consider how Srila Prabhupada did it also. This another miracle. I mean, he comes to America literally penniless. Literally, Prabhupada didn't even have a single cent in his pocket. Not only that, Prabhupada even didn't know where he was going to stay. Can you imagine in a country like America, you come without total, um, without have any, without any certainty, in total uncertainty. No money, no one you know, you didn't know where to go, you didn't know where to stay, you didn't know where to, what to eat. You don't know what was going to happen to you. In this uncertainty, you come to a country like America. The most opulent country. Mm. Prabhupada came in that way. And then we see his achievement. Like just one year, Prabhupada establishes the institution of ISKCON. And that also, when he's establishing, uh, 
small little storefront in 26 second avenue and propad is naming that uh, as the international society for krishna consciousness an international society and that also like the lawyer who was registering the company he had his doubts and he expressed his doubt that look krishna consciousness people don't understand what it is so why not just call it international society for god consciousness proper said no i have come here to sh- show everyone that krishna is god they believe in god they speak about god but they don't know who god is but i have come here to make them understand that krishna is god they are saying god but not knowing who he is it's not that krishna is a hindu god it's not that krishna is just an ordinary personality maybe a little exalted no krishna is the supreme personality of god here and that's what prabhupada actually reminded everybody that uh, just as you mention we about god you say omnipresent god is omnipresent god is omniscient god is omnipotent he is all powerful mm. he is mm, present everywhere uh, he knows everything uh, so these are the attri- these are the qualities of the supreme lord so another quality of the lord is that he is all attractive or he is all attractive therefore he is identified as krishna sanskrit krishna means all attractive now since he is all attractive therefore he is krishna his names are not like our names that a name is given to somebody at the time of his birth to identify him the supreme personality of god it doesn't need any such identification but the supreme personality of god head is identified according to his qualities and according to his past times that is how we have to see him he is krishna because he is all attractive and if god is not all attractive who is all attractive and why he is attractive all attractive that also has been Uh, clarified by shila prabhupan he is all attractive because he possesses all the wealth he possesses all the beauty he possesses all the strength uh, he possesses all the knowledge all the fame and in spite of all that he is all renounced that's why he is all attractive these six are the features or means for attraction so he is endowed with all these uh, aspects that's why he is krishna <clears throat> sometimes people uh, challenge shri prabhupada that well but your form that is how do we accept he looks indian uh, and prabhupada said okay this is my identification of god you show a form of the lord huh? that you are god he is my god show me who is your god no answer yes the renaissance painter like raphael and uh, da vinci they painted god but what is the represent what is the depiction of god there a old man with flowing white beard huh? why should god be old does anybody want to become old so the so the supreme personality of godhead who can fulfill all his desires should he want to be in a state where he looks terrible and who feels terrible what is the best form of our existence what is the best form best phase of our life youth therefore he is eternally youthful 
their consideration if God is since God is the oldest so he must be old but Brahma Sangeeta our scriptures are saying although he is the oldest he is eternally youthful Adhyang Purana Purusham Navajo Vanancha his Adam, his the original personality. Purana Purusham, he was there before anyone else was there. But Navajo Vanancha, he is eternally youthful. Now the consideration is, is this form a matter of our imagination or is this the form that he, already, he eternally has? And in that respect, another consideration is that God doesn't look Indian. He looks like human beings. He is not just, he doesn't look like Indian. He actually looks like any human being. But the reality is that human beings have been awarded his own form by him. That is his inconceivable benediction upon us. He has given us his own form. Man has been created according to the image of God. I mean, they, they figured it out. Bible has figured it out, actually. Man has been created according to his own form. And what's his own form like? His own form is two-handed. And that is his own form, means Vrindavan form. In Vrindavan, Krishna is Dibhuj, Shamshundar. In Vaikuntha, he is not Dibhuj, he is four-armed. So demigods have been created according to the Narayan forms. But human beings have been created according to his own Dibhuj, Shamshundar form. That is our uh, inconceivable good fortune. And... <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada recognized that this message is very important for the world. And on top of everything, he had two other considerations. One consideration that already prevailed his consciousness all the time. My Guru Maharaj wanted me to do this. And since the time he actually met his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Srila Prabhupada had been striving to fulfill that instruction. He was very nicely situated you know, as a manager of a pharmaceutical company, one of the first pharmaceutical companies in India. Uh, actually, it was the second. Uh, the first one was Bengal Chemical, uh, established by one um, scientist, Acharya Prafulla Chandra Ghosh. And this one, Dr. Bosch's laboratory, established by Karthik Bosch. Srila Prabhupada was 26 year old young man, 26 year old young man, householder, had a son. But because Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur wanted him to spread this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu throughout the world in English language, Prabhupada quit his job. The proprietor of that company, Kartik Bosch, was their family friend, his father's friend. So he was shocked when he received that resignation letter. And he asked him, why are you resigning? So he told him what happened, that he actually made a very special spiritual personality and he instructed him in that way and he wants to dedicate himself fully into that service, into his service. Then he said, okay, but still you can do your job and do your uh, assisting him. Prabhupada said, no, when I am working for you, my time is sold out to you. I am, my time is sold out to you. I mean, I had the good fortune of hearing this from Prabhupada's mouth himself. Prabhupada was not telling it to me, but I was present when Prabhupada was relating that incident to one person, his old acquaintance, his, uh, he was a very famous Ayurvedic doctor from Calcutta, old acquaintance of Srila Prabhupada. And 
he came to treat Srila Prabhupada in Mayapur. One evening Srila Prabhupada was talking to him and and he mentioned to him. And then Kartik Bose told him that okay, if you feel that your time is sold out, but what are you going to do to maintain your family? He said, I'll start a business. So he asked, uh, then if you want to start a business, then, you know, actually that's another thing that happened in between. So he asked, what kind of business? Prabhupada said, brokerage in stock market. <laughs> so he discouraged him. That's not a noble business, you know. That's not uh, very, uh, it's gambling, sort of. So then he offered, then why don't you take up the agency of my products for North India? And that is where Prabhupada actually shifted to Allahabad and <clears throat> set up his business there with the agency of the products that Dr. Bosch's laboratory was producing. And anyway, Prabhupada tried in so many ways and Prabhupada said that he was trying so hard to make money and then go to the West to preach. But he didn't succeed. And finally at the very end of his life practically, uh, he appealed to Sumati Morarji. Sumati Morarji was reluctant to let him go. He said, Swamiji, what are you going? What will you do in America? Even in India, nobody wants to listen to you. Who is going to listen to you in America? And do you know what the weather of America is like? It's terribly cold. And there you won't get anything to eat. And Prabhupada was counteracting all those points. Huh? And... <laughs> Then, of course, he convinced Sumati Murarji to let him go. That, and Prabhupada's ultimate consideration was, point was, that my Guru Maharaj asked me to do that. I haven't been able to do that. So at least at this very end of my life, almost uh, uh, at the end of my life, let me at least give it a try. And give it a try. So Sumati Murarji actually allowed him to go that way. But at the same time, Sumati Maharaji arranged for him to come back. She thought that he'll go there in a few days, he'll get disappointed and come back. So she also arranged that any time Prabhupada wanted to come back, he should be allowed to come back in whichever ship is available. Prabhupada himself also, at the beginning, often he used to go to the steamship company office in New York and asking when the next ship was going. He was thinking that he almost was considering to give up. But then you see what happened. Mm. Some young boys and girls came forward to assist him. Uh, one such devotee is here, Jayananda Prabhu, one of the very, very senior disciples of Srila Prabhupada. At a very young age, he committed himself to Srila Prabhupada's mission. <laughs> and Prabhupada himself admitted that these boys and girls, they were not actually just, I mean, they were sent by his Guru Maharaj to assist him. And while speaking like that, Prabhupada started to cry. Jai Shri Shri Radha Nila Madhava Ki Jai Jai Shri Shri Giriraj Govardhan Ki Jai Jai Shri Shri Radha Giridhari Ki Jai Jai Shri Shri Gaurnitai Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai And then whatever Srila Prabhupada did, hmm, it'll literally be written in golden letters in the history of this world. And we are very fortunate that we are, we had the opportunity to be so close to Srila Prabhupada. Some of us are in the same, had the good fortune of being with Srila Prabhupada and you all are also very near, most of you, those who came later after Prabhupada left the planet. You all are very fortunate that 
came so close to his divine grace. So please uh, recognize the value of the gift that Srila Prabhupada gave and that's what we're going to discuss in next few sessions. What is that gift? I mentioned that in the evening, in the afternoon session, we will discuss how Sanatana Goswami established what Krishna consciousness actually is, what we are practicing, what it actually is, in a book called Brihad Bhagavatamritam. How many of you read this book, Brihad Bhagavatamritam? Yeah, you know, it's a big volume, so most really you don't have the time, most of you. So that's why I thought, I'll tell you what is there in the book, maybe it'll be helpful. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Does anybody have any question? I tend to leave a lot of time, say about half an hour for question answer, because I've seen in the seminars like this, lots of questions come up. Uh, so please feel free to ask uh, if you have any question. Yes? Hare Krishna Mara. thank you very much for the wonderful session. Um, one thing uh, you discussed about is uh, in the heavenly planets, um, you know, few times we heard like, um, you know, there are, you know, big literatures are also there like Bhagavatam is like thousands and thousands of verses like that. So the, you know, the residents of heavenly planets, they don't have opportunity to advance in you know, and bhakti and Krishna consciousness. Good, very good question. <clears throat> because they are stuck. You see, from heavenly planet, there is no way out to the spiritual world. Okay, let's try to graphically consider that. The universe has 14 planetary systems, right? Each universe has 14 planetary systems, seven higher and seven lower. Now, earth planet is uh, the middle one. Mm. Now consider if this universe is compared to a 14 story building, seven above and seven basement, underground, right? That is like the, uh, the situation of this world. The other seven planetary, lower planetary systems are subterranean meaning below the surface. Mm. Now consider from this building, if you want to go out, how will you go out? Uh, from the mid, from the, where is the door? At the ground floor. So gra earth planet is the ground floor. So, <laughs> so if you want to get out of the uni this universe, material nature, then you have to go out from the ground floor. Therefore, the demigods, if they, it's not that they cannot, but in order to get out, they have to come to the earth planet. The demigods are praying also, Gayanti Deva Kilagita Kani Dhannastuya Bharata Bhumi. They're praying that this land of, holy land of India uh, is uh, the way out. Therefore, my Lord, if we have any good f piety, if I have any piety left, give me a birth in this uh, earth planet. Mm. Otherwise what happens, the demigods can go out, uh, either they have to come to the earth planet and then go out like Krishna when he comes, he said, let the demigods take birth in Jadu dynasty. Right? In Bhagavatam, you say at the beginning. Because the demigods were qualified to get out of the material nature due to their devotion to Krishna, they actually got an opportunity to born in the Jadu family and then go out of this world to the spiritual world. Does it answer your question? Okay. You made a point that when you close to a mountain, you don't see the vastness, you don't see the greatness, you have to actually go very far. Um, I, I, I understood that as time goes on, people will understand Prabhupada's greatness. You compare the distance to the time, 
but how do you recommend in this age for us to see Prabhupada's greatness? How do we not get too familiar to the point of even being uh, contemptuous of Srila Prabhupada? <clears throat> okay, yes, by meditating on Srila Prabhupada's achievements, meditating on Srila Prabhupada's activities, and reading Srila Prabhupada's books, right? That's how we get to recognize Srila Prabhupada's greatness. Although those who are close to Srila Prabhupada, that's what they have to do. Like for example, when you're standing very close to Mount Everest, you can't really see it. Like all the other small mountains are actually obscuring the view. But if you have the books, the height of Mount Everest, and so forth. Then you get to see, uh, like, actually I had the experience, you know, like, um, uh, not Mount Everest, another mountain, Annapurna. I was near the base camp, but still I couldn't see the mountain. But when I was away, I could see the, you know, it's standing, it's uh, gorgeous, I mean, brilliant. Uh, height so that's the thing we have to read the books or be aware that it is there that is how actually conceive of the greatness similarly yes just you know like for us it's not difficult to recognize Prabhupada's greatness but still those who will be far away they will be recognizing Prabhupada's greatness maybe even more than us mm. Right? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> that Mataji has a question. Oh. Why are you sitting there? You could have sat there. Then. Okay. As our devotion to Krishna increases, will that diminish our self will? Uh, and is dim what diminishes? As our devotion to Krishna increases, Increase. will that diminish our self-will as human beings? No, will is one thing. Will is the faculty that can be applied anyway. Right? Like it can be, the will can be applied to as material nature, it can be applied to the spiritual nature. Right? But uh, the will is there, will will rather as you become attached to Krishna consciousness, your will will be more focused on to Krishna than ever. But what will diminish is a material attachment. That is what happens. Bhakti parishanu bhava virakti ranatra. As you develop your attachment to Krishna, your attachment to the material nature diminishes. I asked you because I have to turn towards you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, Maharaj, um, you have again reminded us about the wonderful, wonderful, priceless gift that Srila Prabhupada has given us and this great legacy has to be preserved for the next 10,000 years and expanded and hopefully flourish even more and more. So we have all these wonderful temples, we have wonderful deities, we have wonderful, wonderful books, we have all these things. Um, my humble plea is that now we must start building strong relationships of love and trust so that we can be there for each other, support each other, encourage each other because projects are there, temples are there, book distribution is there, but our relationships, how, do we have loving, trusting Okay, I got your point. Okay. But my qu immediate que question will be, to how many? The temp big temple is built. How many people are coming here on the weekdays? Only on the Sundays in the feast, everyone is coming. At least that's what I have seen in various temples. Books are there. How many books are being read by people and understood? The number is so few. So before you build relationship, try to bring people first. That means you go out and preach. Mm. I mean, we are in America. How many Americans are here? 
That's the first thing Prabhupada will ask. Ours is the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. We are in America. Where are the Americans? Maybe you all have American passport, but, <laughs> but <laughs> we, I mean, Indians are coming because they're naturally attracted to this. Preaching means get the people, those who are far away, bring them in. That is what Srila Prabhupada will demand. Hmm. Like, when, I mean, I'm not just saying it just for the sake of saying it. Example, Prabhupada went to Nairobi, uh, East Africa. All important Indian people were invited to come and meet Srila Prabhupada in the evening. When they left, Prabhupada asked, I'm in Africa, where are the Africans? Uh, so that is the real purpose of the international society. We have to attract the local people. Then only that will show the success of our movement. Hmm. So, I mean, time and time again I appeal that, you know, you got it, now you distribute it. There are so many people around us. You all know so many uh, local people, Americans. Uh, so give it out to them. It's not that, you know, like we want to I exclude anybody. But the point is, we want to include everyone. Actually, you know, since you brought up the point, you know, today I tell you, we are, we are seriously considering how to attract the Americans or, you know, the people from the local origin, local people. In some places, I mean, we're, I'm talking about, you know, in the, in the GBC level, you know, and we are seriously considering having a program separately for the Americans. Hmm. Because when they come here and see all the Indians, you know, they will tend to think, oh, it's an Indian thing. We don't have any, uh, any place here. And some places they're doing it. Hmm. And they're doing it quite successfully, but they're segregating it. But eventually we have to unify all Indians, Americans, Africans, Europeans, all together we have to hmm, so pursue the key, this. More. So what I'm hearing is that the key is to bring them into the temple and help them to get access Not to the Not only temple, books. the temple is there to attract them to Krishna consciousness. Ah. We have to ultimately consider you know, how their hearts are changing. Hmm. Hmm, it's a matter of change of heart. I, I, I accept what you said. We have to build relationship. Yes, we have to. Which is actually meaning the small little group that we have, we do not have any favorable interactions among ourselves. Mm. A few of us that are there, still we are not interacting with each other favorably. Mm. Mm. How do we address that? <clears throat> Practice whatever Prabhupada preached. Our main thing, yeah, okay, good point also, I'll admit. What is the way to attract everybody? Kirtan, Sankirtan. Like early days we used to just go out in Harinam. But now there is no Harinam practically. There is few devotees are chanting in the temple and our big things are Kirtan Mela. Just all sitting in one, those who are already in Krishna consciousness chanting. No consideration of giving it out to others. Harinam. Uh, lectures out not only in the temple among ourselves. Go out and give it to them. Mm. Anyway, I'm sorry, like, you know, I'm just, you know, hitting the nail right on the head. <laughs> There is a question just behind you. Yes. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I'm so blessed to be here today. And I have a very basic question about utilizing some ESCON resources for, for the children, mostly. We have wonderful Goswami Academy, you know, and the students who go there, they know what ESCON is. And basically they know ESCON, that's why they go there. It's vice versa but to the normal public, like in order to get them involved 
and the students, like child age group 12 years or younger, you know, or maybe 14 years or younger, like anything like Abhay Charan, we watch that. But anything else that we could use, you know, like motivational stories or things like that, uh, so that we can introduce them to Askan. Well, uh, where is Subra? <laughs> can you suggest something? Maybe whatever is available and you're so much involved in teaching here. Uh, firstly, I just wanted to clarify that at Goswami Academy, we don't only have the devotee children at the school. We've actually attracted uh, many children from within the Houston community and those parents, and the school is also very diverse. So we don't only have Indian children at the school. We have Russian kids, Hispanic kids, Caucasian kids, and, and Indian kids. So some of the things that we do to attract is um, we also embed values, value teaching. So a lot of people are very into uh, value. Uh, they want their children to be exposed to values <coughs> as well. And so, so we do that. And then uh, other things that we do is like our no, It doesn't have to be only Indian children. No, in children in general. Sure, yes. I think that's what she's asking. What can be there that can motivate them more into Krishna consciousness? I, I think first we start with like a character building. That's the uh, like, I mean, activity. You know the thing that comes to my mind more like, you know, if there is more books for children depicting Krishna stories, yeah even some videos and things, you know, like for children, how to motivate. We have many devotees. You can also have, involve them in dramas, right? And things like that, you know. Okay, so you're in the right per. You got connection to the right person and she will be <laughs> helping you in that. Hare right. Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, um, we... My, I, my husband and I are living in Kalachanji Dam in Dallas and serving there. And uh, on Sunday, uh, the restaurant is open. Many Westerners are coming, uh, many, many, by Srila Gurde's vision. But um, when they come into the temple, and often I'll tell them, it is 99.9% .9 an Indian <coughs> temple and all glories, because when our movement was crashing and burning, the Indian community, uh, when there was difficulty, they came to the forefront, so all glories to all of these devotees. But nonetheless, when Westerners go in, they see that this is a Hindu temple. So, um, for example, in Dallas, uh, there's a very wonderful devotee, Nityananda Chandra, across the street, who has started, like they call it, the Dharma Den. And it's not... It's all Westerners that are coming. So yeah, many. It's packed. Very good. There could be 40 yeah. people there, young right. people. So it seems like that is a possible, viable. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. To sure. have outreach programs and the thing that is go that to where the people are. Yeah. Maharaj. And we have Plus. to make them understand that Iskon Temple is not a Hindu temple. You know, show them, take them to a Hindu temple, and they have 25,000 different demigods being worshipped. But in ISKCON, just the Supreme Personality of Godhead is being worshipped. That's the difference between Hindu temple and ISKCON temple. These are the things we have to pray. And the point that you made is very true. And in Dallas, it's so prosperous in that way, the Western preaching, because Tamal Krishna Maharaj's mood is being uh, prevalent there. He also, um, we listen, my husband and I, to his lectures every morning. And there are many lectures in Houston where he was encouraging big yeah. time to, to attract West, Western uh, devotees. And I mean, it's not, you know, Houston or Dallas or anywhere. New York or everywhere, you know, like, you know, in a, in a way it's nice. <laughs> you know, I tell you, <laughs> once Prabhupada was lamenting, everyone is coming but the Indians are not coming. <laughs> But now, <laughs> it's <laughs> the situation reversed. Like, so we have to now make the balance. Balance in the sense, you know, now get the Indians and everyone else all get together. Of course, Indians are in an advantageous position because the Indians, you know, from their very upbringing, very, base, very birth, 
they are very close to this culture. They're very close to this, you know, uh, uh, this process. Perfect Japatis. Yes, yes. Even the children. Yeah, yeah, true. Yes. Um, talking about what we're talking about, but also what Rasikendra uh, Prabhu brought up, uh, and what you also speak about having Srila Prabhupada uh, inscripted in golden uh, letters as one of the most, uh, the most significant personality in the planet. Um, I, I, uh, I was just again listening to a lecture from our Guru Maharaj and he was saying, you know, the best thing you can do is what a Guru wants from his disciple is to become Krishna conscious. So that's how you can satisfy me the most. Just chant your rounds, follow the principles. Yes. Uh, and, 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 and I think that we owe it to our grandfather, ourselves, Srila Prabhupada, to do the same because if we do become more Krishna consciousness, that's going to be the legacy of Srila Prabhupada that he will, re he will keep his gift and what he has done uh, for the world alive for uh, years and thousand years to come. Okay. Yes. yes. It's Very like good. one time uh, a devotee, uh, also a Srila Gurudev, you know, how do you worship Lord Chaitanya? And Gurudev said, just chant Hare Krishna. Chant yeah. Hare Krishna and you are worshiping Lord Chaitanya. Right. So by uh, becoming better devotee, you satisfy your Guru Maharaj and it goes up line and then in that way everything becomes uh, stated and glorified. Yes, very true. Yes. <laughs> Maharaj, if you so desire, could you share those burning thoughts that you carry in your heart to keep dedicated for Srila Prabhupada moment. Well, one thing that is very deeply embedded in my heart, the instruction, was the early days with Srila Prabhupada See, one day I was sitting with Shri, in front of Srila Prabhupada while Hari Sauri Prabhu was giving a massage to him in Mayapur on the roof of the Lotus Building. And Prabhupada just, you know, he was having the massage and he started to speak to me. He said, just offer this life to Krishna. Mm. Then he said, for many, many lifetimes you are trying to enjoy but you can see that you are still not satisfied. So just offer this life to Krishna. And then he kept on speaking on that for a long time. And then finally he just told, just offer this life to Krishna and see what happens. Even if nothing happens, where's the loss? It's just one lifetime out of so many. So, so that had, had a very, very deep impression. And of course, Srila Prabhupada also had been very kind. He closed the door behind me to turn around by giving me sannas. <laughs> he blocked, he closed the door forever. <laughs> so I had no other way but to move forward. <laughs> And so another incident that I have also very, uh, very profound impression. I was serving Srila Prabhupada in Mumbai. And one morning Srila Prabhupada wanted some orange juice. So in the kitchen there was no orange juice. I went to the devotee kitchen, there was no orange. Then I had to go to the market. And the market, those days in Juhu, you know, is quite remote. So it took me some time. There was a bus stand and near the, 
there was a market and I got some orange but it took me some time so when I came back and started to make the juice Prabhupada used to call us by pressing one bell ringing it used to he used to press the button and the button was attached to his table the bell rang so I went Prabhupada said what happened to the orange juice I said Prabhupada I'm just now bringing it so I went and quickly started to make it you know it took some time and this time the bell rang again and it just kept ringing and ringing and ringing just from the sound of bell I could understand <laughs> Prabhupada's mood at that time you know so I quickly you know took that um, orange juice in a silver cup of Srila Prabhupada and took it to him and as I went into the room Prabhupada was so upset he said I don't want the orange juice just take it back <laughs> so you know <laughs> with the plate in hand with the glass on it I just kept on moving towards Srila Prabhupada in slow steps <laughs> I came in front of Prabhupada and held it in front of him. For some time Prabhupada would pick, wouldn't pick it up. Then finally he picked it up. <laughs> and he started to drink it. When he was drinking that, then I realized that I forgot to bring the bowl of water that Prabhupada would need to wash his mouth. So I quickly ran to the kitchen and got the bowl. And <clears throat> And then I realized when I brought the water, Prabhupada was already washing his mouth. I forgot to bring the towel. <laughs> so this time I didn't go to the kitchen to get the napkin. I went to Prabhupada's wardrobe and pulled out a small towel. And I started to wipe Prabhupada's mouth with that. And Prabhupada started to speak. He said, The sea. You are trying to serve me so nicely, but I chastise you. <laughs> Please don't mind. When one becomes old, one becomes short-tempered. <laughs> See, when Prabhupada was chastising me, I didn't mind. But when Prabhupada started to speak like that, literally my, you know, my heart really ached in such pain. I couldn't speak up, you know. And then finally I managed to speak up and say, Prabhupada, please don't speak like that. If you don't correct me, then what will happen to me? I make mistakes and if you don't correct me, what will happen? And Prabhupada just silent, he didn't say anything. He just, just looked at me and from his, the way he looked at me, I could understand how much affection he actually has. So that shows what a kind personality he was. He would chastise, but at the same time, he would be so compassionate. I mean, he himself is admitting as if he made a mistake, you know, like so humble and so compassionate. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. So I'll end the class now.